All right, welcome back to chapter six. And in this video, we're talking all about the IR remote control that came with your PTZ camera. It's very likely that you have an IR remote control. And with that being said, it's one of the easiest ways to get started, not only just controlling your PTZ camera, but getting it configured on your network and set up for optimal use. So it's really important that we go over the IR remote control, even though it kind of gets a bad rep as a PTZ camera tool, I really do think it's, it, when you learn about the shortcuts, it's, it becomes an invaluable tool, to be honest. So we've, over this online course in the PTZ camera handbook, uh, we went over the state of the industry, what a PTZ camera is, the parts of a PTZ camera, who's using them, and the different types of PTZ cameras. And now we're really going to dig into the IR remote control. And as you can see here, the IR remote is just one tool to control your camera. Obviously there's IP joysticks, there's serial joysticks, there's smartphone apps, there are video production software solutions, and all of them are great options for controlling a PTZ camera. The major limitation of the IR remote, besides the fact that it doesn't have a joystick kind of tactile feel or the ability to ramp up pan and tilt speeds, really just has kind of a single speed, is that the IR receiver can be elusive, it can be difficult to use, and it also can sometimes, if you have a couple different cameras in the same room, it can accidentally control multiple cameras. So we're gonna to try to teach you guys how to get the most out of your IR camera, your IR remote control, and work with the IR receiver that's usually in the front of the camera. Now, one thing you should know is that the IR remote control doesn't work well outside. And that's because the IR receiver can be hit by sun rays and it can be hit by, you know, the sun in general, <coughs> which could stop it from receiving the infrared signals that are coming from your remote control. But let's take a look at the remote control here and I'm going to go over each one of the buttons. Now, the very first top button is generally a standby button. What this does, it will turn the camera into a standby mode where power consumption will be roughly like half. It's still kind of on, but it's just kind of like in standby mode and waiting. You hit the button again, and it turns on to normal operations. Uh, the uh, numbers one through nine are generally considered position buttons. And what they do is they allow you to set and call presets. So we're going to do that today. You'll see some setting and calling presets, and you'll understand how it's used. The star and the pound buttons are generally reserved for shortcuts, and the shortcuts are really important for using an IR remote control. They allow you to do some like more advanced things with the IR remote, and really unlock what the IR remote is capable of doing. Now, number four is the preset button. It allows you to store a preset into the camera. So you'd hit the preset button, and then you'd hit the number one through nine, including zero, and you would save a the current location of the camera. So the process would be zoom the camera in, move it to the position you like, hit the preset button, and then hit the number that you want. You can move the camera, and the next time you hit that button, whether you saved it to one, two, or through, through nine, the camera will quickly go back to that position. And as you'll learn, it will move back to that position at the speed that you have set for the camera overall to have a speed for the presets. And we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. Now the home button is an important button. It allows the camera to go quickly back to a home position that sets it kind of back up at default. Now the cool thing about the home button is generally preset zero will be where the camera goes to when it boots up. And this is a cool little trick that you can use with your PTZ camera. And what you can do is that if you set preset zero, when the camera turns on, it'll go directly there. So if you always are zooming the camera into a podium or a specific teaching or presentation area, it'll, if it turns off and turns on, it'll go right to that home position. Now the return button is used to move through the menus. So there's this return button here, number six, and it allows you to go back and forth in between the menus. And the menus are generally displayed on top of the video. It's called an on 
screen display OSD menu. And that button helps you get to and from those menus. Obviously, the zoom in and out buttons, we have fast and slow speeds on this particular remote are pretty, you know, that, that's operating the lens, right? The lens optical zoom in and out. The L and R set buttons set the left and right directions for the remote control. So the normal direction would be uh, left and right set for one, but you also have the ability to, to reverse the left and right options. And that is ideal if you have a camera that is upside down. And in an upcoming video, we'll talk about why you probably will want to uh, mount your PTZ cameras upside down. Uh, there's actually some really good reasons to do that. You also have the focus buttons used for focus adjustments. And you have the near, far, manual, and automatic focus buttons at the bottom there. Now, number 10 here on our list at the top are the camera address buttons. Now, many remote controls can be used to control multiple PTZ cameras. So if I show this in a little bit more detail here, I have my, my IR remote here. We see the, we have these top camera select buttons. As soon as you hit one, it lights up just a little bit so you can see. That changes the camera that you control. Now, in order to set that up, you do need to go into the camera. And we'll do that on this video to show which camera you can control. It's an important feature for uh, IR remote controls because you can easily control two, three, four cameras with a single remote and on a budget or if you don't have a joystick, it, it might be an important way to go. Although the iOS app is very affordable, so I would still use the iOS app, but still, it's a good handy tool to have. The pound button, again, is used for shortcuts and we'll go over a few of those today and many of them are you can reference in the handbook Number 12 are the function buttons, and these again are used for commands. So you can quickly set an IP address of a camera or quickly set a function to happen, and those we'll go over in a minute. The reset button will generally clear a preset. Of course, you can always overwrite a preset as well, so that's not quite as, as popular as just overwriting a preset that you've already saved. We've got the pan, tilt, and zoom, the pan, tilt buttons up, down, left, right. Those are pretty practical. And then the menu button, which allows you to open that OSD menu, which we'll look at in a moment. Now, going down to the bottom, we've got the backlight button. If, when you turn, turn, press this button, the backlight compensation will turn on. It's only effective when you're in uh, auto exposure mode. And so just use it if there's light behind the subject and uh, that kind of appears a little dark, and the on-off button should help. Then we have the PT reset. This is the button to self-calibrate the pan, tilt, and zoom, the pan and tilt once again. So a couple of the shortcuts that you may want to know about is uh, showing the camera's IP address, and this is one we're going to use in a minute here. So what you would do to get uh, to show a camera's IP address if you've somehow forgotten, and trust me, it happens all the time, you hit star, pound, four. And when you do that on a camera, in fact, let's see if we can do that now. Okay. Star, pound, four. All right. Um, I guess this camera has a slightly, let's just see. This camera might be. Ah, so one thing I just noticed is that this camera is on camera three. So when I'm on camera two, it does nothing. But when I'm on camera three, it moves. Another thing that I want to do here is I want to hit that star pound four. And now I'm seeing the IP address of the camera. So that is a very handy tool. Um, if we hit star pound eight, we're going to see the all of the information, the serial number, the lens type, the video format, you know, all of the important information of when the last firmware was put on, for example. So again, really important. Um, the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to hit the menu button and you're going to see here that's the on-screen display menu. Um, and we're going to go into this menu in a lot more detail. But one important area here is like we talked about the call, call preset zoom. Um, so how quickly will the cameras uh, move when you call a preset? And you can see here I'm hitting that return button to go back and forth, the return and the home button to go back and forth between these menus. In the setup area here, we have all this 
uh, great new information like motion sync you'll be learning about, focus limit you'll be learning about in upcoming videos. And there's a whole upcoming video on color and exposure that, that would be important for you to know about. Um, so that is important. Now, going back to our presentation, just one more important shortcut that is star pound four, which will enable a dynamic IP address. Now, you may need to reference the manual of your PTZ camera to determine what these shortcuts are. They may be different, uh, definitely, depending on you know, the camera manufacturer. Now, the distance between your IR remote and the camera probably is not gonna be able to exceed 30 feet, and it, it's no one recommends using them outdoors. So just something to consider. If you're outdoors, maybe you should be using Wi-Fi, maybe you should be using serial control cabling. You're probably gonna have trouble with the sun um, messing things up with that. So the key takeaway is the IR remote control is definitely an important tool for setting up a PTZ camera. The IR remote control can be used to open up that on-screen display menu, and you can get into adjusting some of those camera settings. Most IR remote controls can control more than one PTZ camera. So these are, these are valuable for you know, multi-camera productions. And then most IR remote controls have those shortcuts, which allow you to you know, get a little bit more in-depth with uh, easy setup. And in the book, we talk about like a really simple, easy setup workflow to get your PTZ camera on the network quickly. When you, every network is a little bit different. So when you first get your PTZ camera, you can enable dynamic, um, a DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol, and it'll receive an IP address from your network. And then when it receives that IP address, you can use that command that we talked about a moment ago to show the IP address. Then you know what the IP address of the camera is. You can plug that into your web browser, and boom, you've got the camera on the network with a, a static IP with an IP address. Now, DHCP addresses do change from time to time. If the camera turns off and turns back on, it might change on you. So we always highly suggest using a static IP address. But once you've got an IP address on your local area network and you get access to it on your computer, you can now set a static IP address that the camera will always stay at. Don't worry. There's a whole chapter on networking and configuring and best practices for setting up your PTZ camera on your network that we will cover in an upcoming video. That's all for this video. Stick around for our next one soon.